This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, and welcome to worship at Tewksbury Congregational Church on this fourth Sunday of Lent, March 27th, 2022. We are so glad you are here with us in person or that you are watching us from home. Please post your prayer requests and celebrations on Facebook so that I could read them later. The Board of Ministries is accepting nominations for next year. They are due by April 3rd, and you may nominate yourself or someone else. The Easter Bunny is coming Sunday, April 3rd, from 1045 to 12, down in the Fellowship Hall. We have many volunteer opportunities coming up that need new leaders and volunteers. Operation Bandana, which sends bandanas printed with Psalm 91 on it to military personnel. LTLC in Lowell wants us to come back and help to serve. A coordinator is needed there. The Prayer Shawl Ministry needs a new leader. And we, if anybody wants to help transport, pe transport people to and from church, there's an opportunity there. If any of these sound like something you'd like to be a part of, please contact Robin in the office. It's also scholarship time again. You can make your donation online, send it to the office or bring it to church and place it in the offering plate. And finally, Easter flowers are available for um, ordering for Easter. Please get your orders in as soon as possible so that we can make sure we can get what you would like. And there will be um, alternate choices and prices posted on the website sometime this week. Today is Family Sunday, so there is no Sunday school. And now, let us be in the spirit of worship. Good morning once more. How you doing this morning? It's good to see so many of you back uh, this morning. You know, we're talking about the prodigal son today, about going out and just messing it up and then coming home. And although you didn't go out and mess it up, maybe a little bit of prodigals in each of us, you, you have come home. You can always go home, right? Praise be to God. Let us stand and join in our call to worship. Please stand. Come, let us celebrate the forgiving, reconciling love of God. Know that God's love is lavished upon you forever. Come, let us celebrate and praise the God of love. Let us all pray. Lord, it is interesting that it is easy for us to identify with today's scripture about the prodigal son. Some of us are easily reminded of our own selfishness and stubbornness when we willfully sought out our own way. Others are reminded about how angry we were when others were not held accountable for their actions when we have been so careful not to displease anyone. Still, others can identify with the father who, feeling the loss of his son, welcomes him home again, reminding the brother that he has always been in the love and care of the father. We hear this story and it is a pleasant memory. But do we really understand what it is about? Do we know that we have also been stubborn and selfish, angry and unforgiving, sorrowful and caught between two conflicting factions? 
We are no different from these characters in our own unique way. Yet, in God's infinite love, we also are forgiven and healed. We are called to turn our lives back to God's care, which is always extended to us. Forgive us and heal us, gracious God. Open our hearts and our spirits to truly receive blessings of your healing love. For it is the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. now would you join me in the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. may be seated. Well, to our children out there here and out there on the cloud, good morning to you. Uh, but before I get to the moment for children, we're going to have one of the, the children, one of the, one of the young ones that grew up to go to college here. Uh, Hannah, she's going to have a scholarship moment for us. Sorry about that. Hi, I'm Hannah San Clemente, and I grew up as a member of the Tuxbury Congregational Church family. I'm so blessed to be a part of a community of such kind, wonderful, generous, and inspiring humans. Last fall, I chose to continue my academic journey at Mount Polio College in Western Massachusetts. 
The money from the Tuxbury Congregational Church Scholarship has helped me pay for my textbooks and school supplies as I continue this next chapter of my life. Thank you so much, TCC. I'm Hannah San Clemente, and I grew up as a member of the Tuxbury Congregational Church family. I'm so blessed to be a part of a community of such kind, wonderful, generous, and inspiring humans. <laughs> Last fall, I chose to continue my academic journey at Mount Polio College in Western Massachusetts. The money from the Tuxbury Congregational Church Scholarship has helped me pay for my textbooks and school supplies as I continue this next chapter of my life. Thank you so much, TCC. All right, I was about to stand and ask you if anybody knew any jokes. Uh, <laughs> seeing we're talking about forgiveness today, let us forgive technology. Sometimes it doesn't work the way we want it to. God, please forgive technology. Amen. Um, you can always be forgiven, right? How Have you felt like you could not be forgiven? You know, when I was a child, sometimes I, I felt that way. And uh, it was a bad feeling. But I want to tell our children here and and out there on the cloud that you can be forgiven. And you can be forgiven by others, and, and you're always, always forgiven by God. There, there is nothing that you can do so wrong not to be forgiven. Uh, that's how much God loves us. We're, we're like that prodigal son that we're going to hear about. We're going to hear about, about this the guy that squandered it all. He, he wanted his land from his father. He wanted all that wealth, and he went out to the world, and he thought it was going to be great, and it just didn't turn out very well. He, he lost it all. And he was thinking, I could not be forgiven. But he went back to his father, to his dad. Surprisingly, scandalously, he was forgiven. He was forgiven. You know, when Jesus said this story, children, it, it was written in the culture and day where this made no sense whatsoever. No sense. But often Jesus, what, what would Jesus do? Flip it. Not a 360 around circle, but a 180. So children, you can always be forgiven. Say forgiven, yeah. children of God. Let us pray. Great and wonderful God, uh, we're going to hear a beautiful story about, about a son that just messes up everything uh, to be forgiven in the end by his father. We're going to hear from the Apostle Paul too about us being a new creation. In God, um, help our children understand this. Help us to understand it once more that we can be forgiven. We can forgive others because we are mirroring what Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, has taught us all. So if we ever find ourselves being the prodigal, know that we can always go home. I hope that we always hear Jesus saying, come home. In his name we pray. Amen. First reading today is from 2 Corinthians 5, verses 16 to 21. 
from now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become righteousness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Almost did it again. <laughs> the scripture reading today is from Luke 15, 1 to 3, and 11b to 32. 
and I bet you've heard the story before. I have. How incredible is your love, O oh God? We have been made new in your love and reconciled to you and to each other in peace and joy. Be with us this day as we hear your words of comfort and hope. Guide our lives that we may serve you more fully all the days of our life. Amen. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how, ma how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his eldest son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. <clears throat> but he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property and prostitute with prostitutes? You killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, son, you, always, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Donna, for our second reading today. And boy, it's so, it's so good to see so many of you back. It's so good to see all of your face. Isn't it so good to be in the house of the Lord? I know you want to say amen. 
If there's anything that we have learned these last two years is the word constraints. <laughs> Limitations to what we can do. This and that. And we have battled in our country and around the world about these constraints. And it uh, hasn't been fun, has it? No. But is it time to come back together? In our disagreements, it's time to come back together. It's time for us Christians to be the church that spreads the grace of God, the good news, the gospel, wherever we are sent. It's time to come back together. It's time to come home to who we really are. Who in here believes that true freedom in life is found as we follow Christ? True freedom. How many of you tried to do it the other way? You thought being free was going out and living how you wanted to live, believing what you wanted to believe, doing this and doing that. And how did that work out for you? I, I saw some hands back there. All right. Confession is good for the soul. So that's why this, this story today means so much to us, the prodigal. We, we've heard it a lot. We need to be reminded of it, that you can come home. That a person can squander it all, all the things they've been given, to get to this level where they never saw themselves, only to repent. Say repent. Only to repent and to go home. The father never wanted his prodigal son to leave home. But and freedom allowed him to. And he learned it the hard way. And I know we have some hard learners out here. <laughs> Again, to come home and to experience that grace and that love. But hey, let's get down to it. You know, uh, you know sometimes when we want to go out and do it our way, maybe we felt constrained early on in life. You know what I mean? Uh, we thought life was a little boring. And we wanted to go out and we wanted to live life. We wanted to live life. What's interesting about this story is, is that we have a son, the youngest son, that wanted to go out there and do that. And the son asked for his inheritance early. This is scandalous. This is scandalous. When Jesus says a lot of these parables, which I love, I love parables. They're scandalous. And could you imagine the people at that time hearing this? And they're like, they're, absolutely, no way this is going to happen. There is no way that the youngest son is going to go to the father and say, Hey, give me my inheritance. Give me all my land. But what does the father do? Gives him the land. And he goes out to that country to live life to the fullest. I wonder if it was going well early on. All those funds maybe he was given with that land. Living life, partying it up. Wow, doesn't that sound fun? Just living life to the fullest. Uh, just doing it his way. And did it work out? Boy, we were just having fun with technology. Aren't we? Let's go to plan B. <laughs> Pray for me. I'm not used to being constrained. <laughs> so he went out, and it, it didn't work out, did it? It reminds me of those stories I hear of college students that went out to experience freedom for the first time. They didn't know what to do with it. Maybe they bounced their checking account. Maybe they did this. Maybe they did that. Only to have that come to Jesus meeting with their parents. Because they really wanted to stay at that school. Um, I'm not going to say if that was me or not. But uh, <laughs> we all get it, don't we? We all get it. Do you relate to this prodigal person that you hear about? That's the great thing about parables. They're open to so much beautiful interpretation. To me, and I've shared this before, the, the parables is where it begins with me and my faith and my understanding of who God is. This is where it starts with me. So we hear about this young man, the youngest son. He squanders it all. Every bit of it. He even was going to go and feed the pigs just to make ends meet. 
another scandal. A Jewish person would not do this. So unclean. He felt unclean. He felt unworthy. He felt like he could not be forgiven. It was time to go home and beg for that forgiveness. Have you been there? Have you been there? I think of the wonderful writer, Dutch priest, Henry Nguyen, that is often quoted by pastors like me. He wrote a book about the prodigal. You know, in his knowledge of God and understanding of God, he became very depressed because he had a battle with who he was and his sexuality and his chastity, being a Roman Catholic priest. And he became very, very depressed because he felt like he was not being fully accepted by all the people out there. He wasn't free to be who he was. So he wrote this book about the prodigal, and he says this, I am the prodigal son every time I search for unconditional love where it cannot be found. So we have this son, and I wonder why he's out there in this other country as he's making his way home. Will I be forgiven? I just want to be forgiven. I don't want to be restored to where I was before. I just want to go home. I want to work for Dad, and that will be good enough. Sounds like a humbled person, right? Sounds like a person that wants to turn it around and do things the right way. A person that has learned that, that all that wealth that was given to him that he squandered was not worth a single dime. wasn't worth a single penny. He had brought shame to his family. And you know what? I wonder when Jesus was saying this, would a family ever accept somebody at, back into their loving embrace that has done something like this, especially squandering everything they had been given? Another scandal. This is a very scandalous story. There is, this is so full of scandal. And he goes back and he begs for forgiveness. He begs just to be a field hand of his father. I'm going to work for you. And what happens? He's fully restored. His father forgives him. And he is resurrected. Into a new creation that the Apostle Paul talked about in our first reading. A new creation in God. You know, I believe from the time that we are born and we grow up to learn about God and, and we accept that journey for ourselves, that, that we are a new creation. But does that mean that we do not mess it up in life? That we do not become the prodigal son that we hear about? But God never leaves our side. God is never, never saying, well, you can't come home to me. But that's not what this story is about. As we shared with the children earlier, we can be forgiven for anything. We can. For anything that we have done. I don't think the prodigal thought he was going to be forgiven. Yet he was fully restored. He got his clothes back, people. I wonder what he was wearing when he journeyed home. He got his ring back. They had a big party. Now, he went out and party, but this was a different kind of party. This was a holy party, a, restora a restoration and redemption. Doesn't that sound beautiful? Did you know that you could be like the Father in this story? You can be that person that forgives and, and affirms that person to let them know that they're unconditionally loved, to restore them. That is scandalous. That is beautiful. That is grace. The prolific Christian writer Max Licato he writes about grace all the time. I, I think he's the author of grace. He, he really dives into this. He wants people to know that God loves them. And he said that when, when uh, he is forgiven by the Father, that's mercy. But the rest of it is God's grace. Wow. This is profound. You see what happens when you affirm and you love people with unconditional love. It changes the world. It changes people. It lets them know that they that maybe they're forgiven. Maybe, maybe they just need to know that they, they are loved. It, this, is, this is scandalous because I think there are many parts of our world that tells us that we should not do that. 
We should hold the grudges. We should not welcome people back. Well, maybe if they go out and they prove themselves, if they go through this, this program or something like that. But what does our God do? Like, like this father accepts you back. Does that mean that this young man didn't have to deal with the consequences of what was going on? No, because we always have to deal with the consequences, don't we? But that's okay. But that's okay. There was one consequence that the youngest son was going to have to deal with, and that was Big Brother. How many of you have an older sibling? Ever got into it with them? Ever heard, well, mom and dad love you more? Ever heard that? He wasn't too happy because he did everything right. Everything right. Ever felt that way? I did everything right, Lord, and now here comes my scum bucket brother. And you're going you're gonna to love this guy just like before. You're, you're not going to put him through the program. I really wish he would work the fields. He, he needs to come work my fields. Could you imagine the other brother looking at his, at his younger brother working in the fields? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is great. That kid was an annoyance to me growing up. This is wonderful. I understand this guy. I, I really do. I think we've all felt that way. Here's the, here's the hard thing that we need to be reminded of today. Is that God is not that way. And that's a great thing for all of us. Did you know that every parable out there is open-ended? We don't like those stories that don't end, right? Right? I've said this before, you're reading the book and you get to the end, you're like, what next? Some stories should end that way. I believe Jesus left a lot of these parables open because he wants us to think about our lives and our spirituality, how we love our neighbor, how we practice mercy and grace, uh, how to be a Christian and follow. We don't know what happens with the two brothers, do we? Is that okay? Can you think of some good endings here? Maybe one day down the road, the uh, big bro forgives little bro. Says, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's okay. I really wanted you to work in my fields, however. <laughs> then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, but we had to, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. Come to life. Redemption, resurrection. He was lost and has been found. Let us always celebrate that. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you. Thank you, God, for this prodigal story that we hear often and we need to be reminded of because your mercy and grace is sufficient for our lives so that we can move on from failures and sins and to be the person you have called us to be. Thank you for this open-ended story that helps us think about, about our lives, our spirituality, and how we serve you. If we find ourselves in this story, that's okay. Let us apply it to life. Let us practice it. Let it always be a part of our faith and how we know you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
may be seated. Susanna is going to come and lead us in our prayer time. Thank you, Susanna. Before I start the prayer request, I, one thing I forgot to announce is that we are starting coffee hour again. So there are snacks and there is extra ice cream from last week downstairs. So please join us. Oh, no ice cream. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought there was extra ice cream. Just, but there are snacks. So please join us for coffee hour downstairs. <laughs> Sadness prayers for no ice cream. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> we do ask for continued prayers for the people of Ukraine and those that are leaving and just prayers for the whole situation over there. Also prayers for those affected by the tornadoes in the south this week. I have a celebration. My daughter, Pammy, had a little boy on Tuesday. So Steve and I are grandparents. Melissa is asking for prayers for her daughter Haley, that she become seizure free, and prayers for her family that are dealing with some difficulties. Sarah C. is asking for prayers for her dad Bob, who is now in hospice care at home. Are there any other prayer requests in the sanctuary? Yes, Matt. Uh, prayers for the life uh, of Alan Rice, and um, uh, we keep his family the right family in our thoughts. Yes, prayers for the right family and for the memorial service yesterday for Alan, and we just pray for the family. Yes, Robin. Robin is asking for prayers for a family that has come into, in, she knows of, that have multiple layers of need, so prayers for that family. Yes, Desna. So a friend of Desma's got a lung transplant and is doing very, very well, and so we have Thanksgiving prayers for that. Any others? Yes, Ashley. So just continue prayers for uh, my boyfriend, Brad John. Uh, he's not homeschooling anymore, so it seems like everything's going to be okay. So Ashley's boyfriend's dad, John, had, some, had a big fall and is doing well and is not in a sling anymore, so Thanksgiving for that. Yes, Pam. So a prayers for one of Owen's classmates who just found out he has liver disease. So prayers for that young person and their family. Yes, Christopher. Uh, I'm celebrating how full this month is. Amen. We are celebrating that there are 75 people in this sanctuary today. <laughs> now let's be in the spirit of prayer. God, we bow down before you today in our prayers to lift up many to you, many that are hurting and need to feel your loving embrace, like you loved the son that came home to the father's embrace. Thank you for being a God like that, that never leaves us alone, that accepts us for who we are, that can send us healing and love. Thank you for being the God that you are. Thank you for being the God that calls us to be the church, to follow your ways, to be a light, a beacon to people, especially in great times of need as we have battled through so much. Our prayers we lift up for the people of Ukraine today, for those down in my native south that are recovering from tornadoes once more, for those that are hurting around the world, help the church to be there to uplift them, to support them, to bring healing wherever it is needed. Almighty God, we love you. We thank you for this time of prayer. Thank you for guiding our church. And may we be that church that you call us to be here in Tewksbury, to spread that good news. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I invite our deacons to come forward as we receive our offering.
we can remain standing for our final hymn this morning, we have 348, Softly and Tenderly. blow out the candle of love today to symbolize that we're journeying to Holy Week and to the crucifixion. But even in our darkness, we learn today that just like the prodigal, God is there to welcome us home, even in the darkest moments. Well, let us go forward. And if you are the youngest son, go home. <laughs> if you are the father, get ready. Somebody's coming home. And if you're the other brother, brother today, that's okay. I think you'll work it out in the long run. <laughs> Let us go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Amen.